That fly won't bother us now. What is it that draws bugs to the light? I don't know. It is kind of relaxing. Yeah. And I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. And what are we doing? Oh, I'm going through my mail. Yeah, yeah, wow. I, I found it best to go through my mail once a month. Well, that seems like a terrible idea. No, not at all. No. Junk. 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 Yep. No, no, a sweepstakes is never junk. This is for a lifetime supply of sardines. You don't even like sardines. I might one day. Keep pile. Okay. Junk, 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 Ooh, junk, wait. junk. Oh! Ooh! <laughs> what, what is, is this? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sound effects. You're invited to a party! Oh, oh that could be fun. It could be. See? Yeah. See how wonderful this is? I wouldn't have this kind of excitement if I would have opened this earlier. And now we have a potluck party to go to today in one hour. I'm supposed to bring something to share. I don't have time to make anything, Brandon. I mean, surely you have something. Wait, we, we, ah. Uh -huh. okay. No! Uh, what? Oh! What is this? Uh. <laughs> nothing. Look, look, I got nothing. Look at all this. I have nothing to bring. Nothing. Nothing. No! Uh, oh, oh. What? Uh, come in. What is that? My, did you, why did you knock? Or did you change? John, I have a solution to all your problems. Introducing the Rehydrator 5000. With its patented refresh technology, we can take any food and restore it to its original state. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Will it work uh, for this food I have for the party? Yeah, let's try these raisins. Uh-oh. Here, let me try. <laughs> wow! How do we get the bowl? That's the Rehydrator 5000. Okay, I think I can make this work. You know, and if only I had some cheese, that would be perfect for the party. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, of course. <laughs> 
Get it off. Get it off! John! Get off! Ah! 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 What? Ah! What? Where? Where am I? Where? Did you change? No, no. What happened? I think you panic napped. Oh, man. Yeah, but no, sometimes it's a good thing. You come up with great solutions when you wake up from your panic naps. Do you have a rehydrator, 5000? A what? That's what I figured. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, maybe Kellen has one. Hey, fellas. How's it going, Kellen? I'm great. How are you doing? Well, I'm supposed to take some food to a party, but I have nothing to bring. You know, a lot of the times it does feel like we may have nothing to bring, but our story today reminds us that God can use the smallest thing to do something incredible. Oh, that sounds great. Take it away. We can find today's story in the Gospel of John. Now, the Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament. That's where we can read the good news about Jesus. Okay, wherever Jesus went, he attracted a crowd of people. One day, after Jesus had been teaching the people and healing the sick, he crossed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, maybe to get some peace and quiet. Jesus, I love you so much. Jesus, you have great teachings. Thank you for everything. I miss you all. I miss you. But when he got to the other side, a large crowd of people had followed him. Jesus, I love you. I'm all the way here. You remember me? Did you bring anything to eat? I did not bring any snacks at all. Jesus saw the crowd of people. He knew they were hungry and he had compassion for them. So he asked Philip, one of his disciples, a question. Where can we buy bread for these people to eat? Now, Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but Philip answered with something along these lines. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. I mean, uh, I, I, I appreciate you wanting to feed all of these people, but uh, what? <laughs> I mean, where are we gonna find bread to feed all of them, huh? We're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm just doing the math here. Um, yeah, uh, I'm seeing at least 5,000 people here, uh, probably more. This is, uh, and this, uh, and this. Probably way, way more. And I mean, if we multiply that by the cost for bread for everyone, uh, carry eight. Oh, that's half a year's salary. Philip could not believe there was any way to feed that number of people in the middle of nowhere. Another one of Jesus' disciples, Andrew, approached followed by a young boy. Hey, Jesus. We have a boy here who's offering to help. He has uh, five loaves of bread and uh, two small fish. Here you go. Yeah, uh, I don't know how far that's gonna go with such a large crowd. <laughs> have the people sit down. Uh, everyone, sit down. Okay, th there's plenty of grass. Yeah, j okay, just, just have a seat. Eh. Please? Thank you. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks. Then he handed out the bread to all those seated and he did the same thing with the fish. Thank you, Jesus. The disciples started passing out the food to all of the people. Now, many of the disciples didn't believe that they could feed thousands of people, but the food never ran out and everyone had enough to eat. After everyone was fed, Jesus told his disciples to gather the leftover pieces, don't waste anything, and the disciples did. Any leftovers? Absolutely, I'm stuffed, here. Ooh, ah. And when they had finished collecting all the pieces, that's 12 baskets, and we started with Ugh, I just don't get that math. <laughs> it's a miracle. The end. I love how Jesus didn't turn the people away when they were hungry. Absolutely. It would have been easy, even reasonable, to ask everyone to go home. 
but Jesus always cared enough to do something about someone else's needs. And I thought the young boy was incredible. Oh yeah. He didn't have a lot of food, but he gave what he had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of Jesus' own disciples couldn't believe that there was any way to feed that many people. It seemed hopeless, but a young kid was willing to give what he had so that Jesus could do something incredible. That's amazing. Thank you. No doubt. I'll see you next time. You know, I I think it's great to be reminded that even when it seems like we don't have much to give, we can trust God to use what we do have for something incredible. Oh, that's true. And I think it's also true that we all have something to give. We do? We do. Reveal the question. What do you have that you can use to help others? Oh, maybe you have two small fish and five barley loaves. Probably not, but maybe a friend forgot their lunch at school. You can share some of your lunch with them. Right, or, or you may have some time you can give to volunteer at your school or a church in your community. Oh, you have your words and you can give them to encourage others or, or stand up for someone who's being mistreated. Yeah, oh, and if you have a rehydrator 5,000, you can turn an egg into a live chicken. What are you talking about? Panic nap, you had to be there. All right. Well, I'm sure you have a lot that you can use to help others. So talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Mm -hmm.